This prayer cancels the curses of life. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you for yet another opportunity to come into your presence. Thank you Lord, for the gifts of life and health. Thank you for your protections, provisions, healings, and deliverances. Lord, as your word will be coming, now let it come with power. Let all that I am going to say be what you have quickened in my spirit. Let it bring healing, edification, deliverance, and transformations into the lives of my listeners. In the name of Jesus. Lord, let the prayers that will follow bring final healing and freedom to every listener. Let it terminate every form of curse, every evil chain, every satanic yoke, and every limitation in our lives. In accordance with the scripture of Psalms 107, verse 20, which says, He sent his word, and healed them, and delivered them from their destructions. Lord, let your word that will be coming this hour be the sent word. Let it come with healing powers, deliverance powers, and yoke-destroying powers. In the name of Jesus Christ. Dear Father, Lord, let your word come with fire, thunder, and brimstone to rout the devil, his demons, and their cohorts and destroy every opposition to the destinies, progress, and emancipation of everyone under my voice. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, dearest Father Lord, for answering, for in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The Word. In Galatians, chapter 3, verses 13 and 14, the Bible says, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now, a curse or curses are the opposite of a blessing. When a person's life is devoid of favor, blessings, and goodwill, and everything is all about struggles and failure upon failure, other things being equal, a curse is at play. And it will not be right to believe that curses do not exist. Curses are real, and the Bible teaches that they exist. But the good news is that the coming of Christ has accorded relief, freedom, and deliverance from the curses of life. But we have got to believe and accept the sacrifices of Jesus Christ for us to be truly and realistically free. Just as the Bible clearly stated in the passage we read. Galatians 3, verse 13. It says that Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. And that was exactly what Christ came to accomplish for humanity, and He has done it and fully accomplished it for us believers. The only thing left or required of us is to accept it, appropriate it, and leverage it for our freedom from the limitations of the curses of life. In John 3, verses 14 and 15, the Bible says, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so, must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. The golden serpent was provided by Moses as instructed by God for the healing of all those bitten by the serpent of judgment, allowed by God as punishment for the people's sins. But God later, out of grace and his abounding mercy, provided an escape route for them, which is the golden serpent. But they had the responsibility to look at it to get healed from the bite of the serpent. Even so, God has provided Christ in the similitude of the golden serpent, who came and died for the redemption of man from sin and the curses that came with it. But we still have the responsibility of accepting, receiving, and believing to make his redemption a reality in our lives. Which is with no respect of race, tribe, language, or people. It is the same for everyone. In Revelation chapter 5, verses 9 and 10, the Bible puts it this way. It says, And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred, and tongue, and people, and nation, and hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. 
So this understanding is the foundation for the destruction of every curse of life, whether generational, ancestral, self-incurred, or whatever else constitutes a curse. But as the scriptures say, we still have to come to God humbly, acknowledging that we have sinned, and then seek His pardon and forgiveness in Christ. And that is what the Bible means in Romans 3, from verses 23 to 25. For all have sinned, and come short of the glory of God. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood, to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are past, through the forbearance of God. I pray for everyone who has heard this word and has decided to key into it. Lord, let our sins be forgiven, let every siege, every yoke, and every curse that may be trailing us be broken and destroyed by fire now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, let the proofs and evidence of our freedom and liberation from the curses of life be immediate. Let us pray. Dear Father Lord, we come unto you this hour in the name of Jesus Christ, and after the order of 2 Chronicles, chapter 7, verse 14, where you say, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. Dear Lord, we acknowledge, like the psalmist in Psalm 51, saying, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies blot out my transgressions. Wash me throughly from mine iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, the only, have I sinned, and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shopen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean, wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall shew forth thy praise. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it, thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. Do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion, build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, with burnt offering and whole burnt offering, then shall they offer bullocks upon thine altar. Lord, thus I pray and ask, in the name of Jesus the Christ of God. Dear Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, blot out every handwriting of ordinances that are against me. Nail to the cross everything contrary or that is opposed to my well-being, fruitfulness, progress, and prosperity. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, destroy and spoil every principality and power against my destiny, family, and household. Lord, triumph over them and make open shame of them in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, dear Father Lord, for your answer, for in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen.